everyone. Let me turn the music down. How are you all doing this lovely Friday afternoon? Hooray, it's almost the weekend. I cannot wait to have some good times and relaxing times this week. Well, not really, because we're cleaning out the garage. I don't know how relaxing that's going to be. Uh, but I am very much looking forward to today. Uh, basically, what's going on is I am, for those of you who don't know, I am working on a terrain build project commission for Cobalt Press, basically recreating some parts of the city of Zobek, one of their amazing locations in their Midgard world. And because of that, I'm doing a lot of new things that are going to be involving cityscape stuff. So I am today going to show you how I am making these city brick walls that are scattered. So that way they can use that as means of sort of setting up like a city square or represent sort of the side of a building and everything like that. So if you follow me on Twitter, you've prob Twitter and Instagram, I put that both on there. You've probably seen this floating around and this is one of the lengths of the brick wall that I'm gonna show you how I made these. Uh, this is one of those things where it's actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And once you get the pattern of it going, it makes it so much easier. So I just wanna say hello to everyone in the chat. I love how you all just jump in right away and get going. And it's just, it's a lot of fun to um, see the interactions and where everyone's hailing from. We, we have everyone everywhere, which is lovely. And I'm happy about that to say the very least. Let me know how the sound is going. I have my new microphone. I got my blue, not my blue, I got my snowball from Yeti, which I'm very excited about as well as a boon to hang it up and over. So that way it's not picking up the sounds happening from the table, all that loveliness and well as my other second screen. And this is because my patrons uh, help out with that. I budgeted to get some secondary equipment so that I'm not playing the up and down the stairs equipment game because that was getting old real fast. And I also get so freaked out every single time I'm carrying stuff up and down the stairs. I'm like, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip. Huh. Now I can just have things sort of set up where all I have to do is bring my laptop down, plug things in and go. So I'm very excited for that. Plus it gives me some extra time back. So anyhow, it's Friday as Dungeon Matron just said. Hi y'all, happy Friday. Absolutely happy Friday. So I'm gonna show you how I start making these. Now it's actually pretty straight forward once you get this whole system going. Now I am doing two different lengths for the set that I'm gonna pass along to Cobalt. I'm gonna have lengths in six inches as well as lengths in uh, three inches. And that gives you enough uh, variety so you can play around with things. And there's also going to be corner cap pieces. That's another build I'm going to share with you because a lot of these corner cap pieces are also going to be a light effect uh, lantern uh, type of thing. So that's going to be happening, if not next week, uh, then soon. So you can see how that looks. And I'm very excited for that little technique because I found some fun stuff that I think is really going to make the difference for this. So super excited. When it comes to materials, you definitely want to make sure for the prep work, you have a nice heavy metal ruler. Like heavy does make a difference. The nice thing about my particular ruler that I adore, and this is from Swanson, it is, and this becomes a time saver, it itself is an inch wide. So it makes it very easy to measure things out once you get a few things going. So what I'll do is I'll get my strip measured out in terms of the width that I need. So I'll get my foam core strips measured out to six inches wide. And then whatever the length is I have of the cut, because a lot of times I'll dip into my scrap pieces. And then all I have to do is place this ruler at the edge and then just literally score across, score across, score across. And it's so much easier to crank out a whole bunch of one inch strips. So you are gonna wanna get your Dollar Tree foam core. You're going to want to cut it out either in a width of, these are the three inch ones, or widths of six inches, and then go back into that long piece of foam, and you're gonna cut through so that everything's going to measure an inch in width. So you have your either three inches long or six inches long, and one inch deep. Oh, look at everyone jumping in. We have Mike, we have Puddin, Zach, Nicholas, Todd, hello, 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 and Jan, uh, Joel, uh, Paulo, you've been here since the beginning, which is great to see. So what I'm going to do is show you how this all goes together. There are some important patterns that go into creating the bricks themselves. And the formula for this is you're going to need four strips for each of these sections. All right. So this is basically consisting of four strips. You have your top cap layer, which I'll show you how that gets formed. And then you have your three layers of brick. And this is where the way you cut these is going to matter in terms of a pattern. So what you're going to want to do first is just peel away. Once you get your strips cut out again, an inch wide to the length that you get, that you're going to want. I went six and three. 
you obviously can play around with it and make it whatever length you want it to be but for my own sanity those are just the section lengths that I'm making and that way it gives them some abilities to work around and create and build because a lot of what I want to be able to provide them is modularity so change what the effects are and this again is why I always say the Dollar Tree foam because it just peels away super easily this doesn't mean you can't get other foam core you may just find hmm thank you you may just find that to remove that paper it definitely gets a little bit tricky on um, sometimes you might have to wet the paper down a little bit to peel it away there are different means of doing that um, and Nicholas is giving us a recommendation as to where to get all these rulers which again I highly recommend getting a good ruler and also getting good for this project I'm using my Fiskars finger knife this this I love this because you'll see why in just a minute as well as my mini utility knife again for the more finite smaller details come in very handy um, so that being said oh the other thing as to why I chose an inch this wasn't an arbitrary width the reason why I went with an inch is so that it becomes a playability factor where you can have PCs going up on these walls and you know, maybe they're jumping over into someone's private garden or something like that I wanted to make sure these are all something where you can actually physically put minis because I was debating doing a half inch wide and looking over the two prototypes I definitely like the way the inch base so to speak works as opposed to a half inch because you try and put minis on there and it was like weeble wobble factor and things were tipping over this gives a more solid like okay you have one PC running along the wall trying to get the bad guy that type of thing that's why I went for the inch wide uh, for anyone curious and wondering so you're gonna see how it gets to this point and we'll see I want to try and wrap this up closer to like 1 1 15 the latest um, and then if I don't happen to get to the painting then I can always try and do the painting next week depending on where I'm going with things uh, so what you're gonna to want to do is first take one of your pardon me one of your cutout pieces it's mini V yes for those who haven't seen this is mini V from crippled God foundry they created her for me last year I absolutely love her she's got my channel logo on there uh, they've made her like this wonderful elf druid <laughs> setup they know me so well uh, so I'm gonna be bringing in mini V every so often for sense of scale so what you're gonna do is take one of those pieces this is gonna be your top piece now I just use my thumbnail and all you're gonna do is just simply pull your thumbnail down to round off the upper edges however you're gonna leave the bottom edges alone and this sort of creates an instant bevel to your foam okay so you get this bevel action going which you can kind of see and it's a super easy way of doing that and then what we're going to do okay yeah jump back in and see if that helps uh, Adam I, sometimes I swear uh, yes Garris mini has a cat they've made minis for all of the guild masters which I think is fantastic so once you get those beveled edges again just on the top portion I then take my super beat up wire brush this this brush has seen so many better days <laughs> hello Brandon and what I like to do with this is and hello whatchamacallit and what I like to do is this is also good for getting out some aggressions literally just stipple the brush on top of the foam and this is something you can also use foil for but I have found that my gnarlied up wire brush works super duper well to get a really nice texture and once that happens you'll see I'm gonna show you the painted version because it's a lot easier to see you get this really cool porous stone look which is what I want for the top cap of my brickwork uh, again you could do it differently you could use it with your uh, foil if you want to add texture that way you could even take the wire brush and kind of make sweeping motions so it looks more like cut concrete if you're going for a more modern look but yeah that's basically the idea is to get that cap top texturized for you now now we're going to get into the formula of how you want to get these pieces prepped and this is where absolutely you do want to make sure you have a cutting mat for this because it takes a lot of that guesswork out for you so the formula is going to be two of one style and one of the other and you're going to make sort of like a sandwich so this piece is going to get layered between these two pieces so what you want to first do is lining this up and I just make sure I have it stuck in a nice one inch space so you can see all of your half inch marks going around beautifully and then go into your you can use your Fiskars for this I like the Fiskars because of the angle you can use your mini utility knife as well and for the two two layers you're gonna be working with the half inch marks here 
to get this little marching order of bricks. And I do recommend putting in a nice fresh blade for this. Older blades will snag and pull at the foam. And so all I am doing is, again, lining this up on my cutting mat and then just quickly marking in. And I'm going in maybe about a quarter inch tops. You do wanna make sure that's in there and that it's marked up. Let's see if I can get this to show nicely for you. That's the hard part when it's all white. Um, bring it up a little closer and I gotta shield it is the problem. So you have these half inch marks, which are kind of hard to see right now. Yeah, you can see right through there. You have these half inch marks that you want. Now, when it comes to your edges, what you're going to do is sort of balance this between a half inch mark mode. So it's got a little square at the top and this, this I eyeball, and then just go through and notch it where the two lines are. This is why I like this Fisker's knife because it just manipulates beautifully. And then what you're gonna do is, like what I did with the cap piece, I'm going to rub my thumbnail along the edges just to give it a slight bevel, bevel, not a bevel, a bevel. Not quite as deep as I did for the top cap, but just enough so it's not a perfectly straight edge. And then I go in with my fingernail and I just sort of open that space up a little bit more. If you don't have fingernails like I do, you can also go in and just use something like a metal nail file or even a mechanical pencil. And this is how you start getting the bricks better exposed in this cut. And now you should hopefully be able to see that just a little bit better. You can see all those notches and everything right there. So you're gonna do this twice. So I need to do this again. So once again, it's going to be, and actually it's on the right way for the finger knife. So again, you're gonna line this up inside with your inch marking and then just go through and slice the foam at those half inch marks like a so. And then, hello, Kelly aka Killamore. And then again, you're gonna take it over so that you have a square sort of balancing in the middle. This is more of the eyeball effect. And then notch, 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 notch. And once again, <laughs> yeah, those of you without finger fingernails, well, actually what I started doing was taking a pointer and thumb and just sort of guiding it through like that. Again, you just wanna slightly round off those edges on the foam. And then here, let me find what I do, what I do, what I do, what, here we go. So, so you can take a metal nail file and the top portion. You can also just sort of insert that just to open up the spacing a little bit more. So if you don't have fingernails, this is your other option. You can use one of these lovely, simple nail, I think I got these from Dollar Tree and it was like five in a pack? It was five or three. Five or three in a pack of these. A pack, a pack, a pack. Oh, I've gotta watch Hocus Pocus. Oh, book! <laughs> Hello, Down Under Blunder, how are you? Always good to see you pop in when you can. Find a local butcher that makes sandwiches for lunch and uses door. Oh, that is a good tip. Thank you, what you looking at? Thank you very much. All right, so then that takes care of my two pieces. And you'll see they almost look like those old like um, foam mats that interlock together. But those are the two pieces you want done like this. And now we're gonna go to the middle piece, the, the sandwiched piece. So in this case, kind of like what I was doing on the edges of these pieces, I am actually going to balance it so that it's about a quarter and a quarter on either side here. All right, so you can see that right here. And then going back in, I'm going to notch at those half inch marks again, but now I have a staggered line to it. All right, so I'll flip it around, do the same thing. Get it so that my lines are marking up about a quarter and a quarter in. Again, I don't get too, too crazy exacting mode. Just play around with it. But then what you'll do is you'll put this back into its inch box and you're gonna use the half inch mark right there to make your slit at the end pieces. 
okay? So this is what you'll do regardless of length. This is how you'll get your pieces set up. You have your two pieces that run along perfectly with your half inch on the sides, and then you skew it for your end pieces, and then you'll have your one piece that you skew for the sides, and then you use the middle mark for your end pieces. So let me quickly just, again, oop, hold on, I got a quick bevel. And if you don't have the nails, you can also take this file. But if you're going to do a lot of these, do have on some sort of protective covering. So you're protecting your airways, please, 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 please. I'm doing this very quick and lightly, so it's not going to do too much. But this will add up, trust me, if you're doing a whole bunch of these at once. So again, just go in. I'm using the file this go around so you can see how it can easily substitute. The nice thing is, is this is where you can sort of assembly line. So you can do a whole bunch of these one night while you're watching a show or a movie, and then the next night you can do the assembly, and the night after that you can do the layer coat of the prime coat, and after that you can do the, well there's other steps that go into there. Hello big brother and hello fellowship of the tables. I see you. Okay, so that gives us our three layers here, as well as, there's, as, well as our top cap layer. To put these together, I am using my tried and true Elmer's glue craft bond glue stick. This stuff is my favorite. I will not chintz out on a cheaper glue stick for this part, part of the project. I do want to make sure this stays as it is nice and strong. So you're going to start first with one of your bottom layers, the one that has the two notches on the ends and just put a nice healthy layer of this glue onto the glue stick or on from the glue stick onto your piece of foam and then you're going to jump to the piece of foam that has the center notch and you're going to place that on top and you're going to do your very best to line these up edge to edge side to side and you'll see you get that staggering of the lines right there so you want those lines to be staggered like that okay and give, you know, a little pressure, pinch it down to make sure it really adheres. And then you're going to put another layer of this craft bond. Just be careful as you do this so you don't over wiggle it uh, and you're like skewing the two pieces because the bottom layer is still easy to manipulate since that glue is also still wet. Then you're going to take your other double notch piece, put that on as your top layer and then do your best to line these up again, like so. And you'll see you get your staggered brickwork that way. And again, I'm just pinching these through. Elmer's, yep, oh see, I was talking about peeling it off your hands a couple weeks ago and people were like, dee 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 crickets. Brent, thank you for piping up. Now I don't feel like such the weirdo. <laughs> so those are your three layers of brickwork. Okay, that's how you get that brick effect going. Now we're gonna put on our cap piece. The nice thing is, is with a cap piece, I put the glue on that as well as my fingernail. So put the glue on the cap piece. It's a lot easier because you can put a nice healthy layer on that and then just place it on top. And again, you want to try and get things to line up as best you can. And you will find just by the nature of the beast, sometimes things get slightly skewed. I will oftentimes press down on top because you still have a little bit of literal wiggle room to get things to readjust more. And if you find there's pieces that are really sticking out, you could go in and just hand cut that. However, I hold off simply because when you add the texture to it, sometimes you find you can manipulate that foam down anyways. Now at this point, you need to make sure that this piece dries before you do anything else with it. So I've actually moved ahead and made sure I have you made up. And what I do is I always put a weight on top of this. So I have, I actually have just like this nice piece of wood and I'll put this on a little side table I have over here and pop this on top and just let it dry with the wood on top of it. So you make a whole bunch, pop the wood on top and let the weight of that just sort of keep everything in order and weighed down. Um, I never worry about over wiggling it, says fellowship the tables, no. Um, okay, so Puddin did it too. Puddin did that as well and hello, Chris. Thank you for joining us. All right, so now what I'm gonna do once it is completely dry um, I do have pieces that are already assembled. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Hold on. Where am I going with this? Oh, 
Uh, again, oh, this one didn't texture. So I'm going to first put the texture on quickly. Again, with my super gnarly wire brush. I actually have a plastic bra plastic bristle brush <laughs> um, for wood grain that stays nice and straight. I found that my wire brushes, I beat them up so quickly that they're better for texturing. Um, so let me get this guy going. And then what you will do is for the bricks, I will go and do the same thing along the side for the bricks. And this is where I said, you don't have to worry as much about things being even there. And this is how you get that sort of porous effect that you will see for brickwork. And just go around and do that. And you will have, as you can see on what's painted, the open porous look that brickwork will often have been going there. Um, the glue holds the pieces together beautifully on, and then especially because once you put on this layer, I mean, this is foam and it's, ow, <laughs> it's hurting my knuckles. Um, so that is, uh, that's where you put the texture onto this. So you get the texture on the top portion, yoink, as well as around the brickwork, which again, it's a lot easier to see once things have been covered up with that first layer of prime. So now that I have this, these are actually kind of light. I don't want, I don't want a player to get over exuberant and they're blowing the brick everywhere. So what I started to do to give these a little bit more heft is I actually put screws in on the bottom. Okay, so this one already has the screws put in. I will show you on this one how I put the screws in. I put the screws to them. And these are the screws I picked up. Uh, this is from Home Depot. It's the Tex. It's self-drilling screws, which actually is quite helpful because with the foam, it keeps it from tearing. Pardon me. Um, so, <laughs> wait, what? Welcome to the club. Admission is free. Pay the trial for the glue. <laughs> <laughs> like what admission um, so these guys work out to be just the right length and everything and for the six length I put in three you can actually do more than the three I just decided three would work and for the two or not for the two for the three inch ones I'll put in two is sort of the plan now the same thing is just take out these screws. You will need a mini screwdriver because you want to make sure as you put these in, you'll see you want a slight countersink. Oh, and let me let me cap the finger knife before I inadvertently slice myself. So ironically, I got sent this lovely little screwdriver with my monitor to assemble it. We all miss Bob Ross. So true. Uh, so have a little screwdriver ready, and then you're going to flip over to the bottom side, not the textured cap side. Flipping over to your bottom side. I then just kind of line it up again and I mean you don't have to be fully exact with this so I just kind of work it in thirds now because these screws have this tip that I like you can see it has that right there that helps guide it in without the foam getting torn up so really all you have to do is sort of just press it in to make sure it catches and space it about as evenly as you can. It does not have to be exact. Then taking your screwdriver, I love how seamlessly this does it, screw that in, but then you also wanna make sure it is as counter sunk in as you can possibly get it so that when you look at the edge, the screw head goes bow bow. That is actually very, very important. Otherwise, if you don't counter sink it, it will be a weeble wobble issue. Now don't go too overboard because you will just make this fit. If you press it too far, you will have the tip of these pop out. So be careful with that. Um, unless you can find a slightly shorter screw, that helps too. But this is what I found that works for this project and a ta -da. So now we have the screws in and I can hyperventilate but I really have to like focus my breath on this to make it go flying. If you want this weighed down more, you can of course put in more screws to really get some heft to it. But I have found that the number three is enough to keep them in, in its spot. Um, but I don't want to have this presented as, hey, look, there's screws at the bottom. So we are going to put a bottom layer of just some very thin, uh, I'm blanking, oh, cardboard, <laughs> cardstock. So we're putting on some cardstock onto the bottom. And to do that, you are going to want a low temp hot glue gun. 
And all I'm going to do is go to my low temp hot glue gun, wiggle on some glue. Helps to get some on the edges. This doesn't have to be as exact. The reason why I do not use the craft stick glue is because I really want to make sure this piece stays on. Oops, I just did out of the screen. So then you're going to press this on top, give it a little wiggle, and give it like a minute to just sort of take before we move on to the next step. And you can even do this, I have found. If you kind of slide it up and down, it gets that glue to sort of even itself out more. And now you have the glue holding onto the cardstock. Yay! So you can see. Doo -doo -doo. That's the problem with these white pieces. Even though I play around with it, you can see how that's now looking. All right. Is that holding? That is holding. Okay, now that that's on, I just go back in and I will freehand with my utility knife. I don't use the finger knife for this one just because this I find is easier for a quick straight draw. I'm then gonna go in and I'm actually going to bevel my knife just slightly. I'm not gonna go straight on perpendicular to the paper. I'm gonna do like, let's say like a 45 degree angle. This is because it'll give you a tighter cut. Let me see if I can get this in frame. All right, we'll do it this way. So it's going to be beveled ever so slightly. Actually, I don't need to be that long. And then, slow and steady, draw the knife down firmly and cut away the excess. Um, you can use the screws and washer, or the sinkers and washers, but the washers add an extra spacing, which you don't really need. Uh, the screws, it's quicker, it's easier, and it's done. Uh, that's why I end up going for the screws. It's just quick and easy. And away you go. And again, same thing here. And I'm tilting my knife again at that 45-ish degree angle as I cut because it gives you a far closer cut line to your edge, which, let's see if I can show you here. So you can see it's not sticking out or anything. It actually kind of gets tucked underneath the brick. Let's see a little bit better here. You see it gets tucked under the brick as opposed to sticking out and running so you can see it. So that's the, that's the reason why I really recommend making sure you get that 45-ish degree angle to how you're holding your knife before you cut up and against there. So you can see it gives it a little bit more of a flushed cut to that. And this basically gets you ready for the next step, which is going to be painting. So now we want to paint this up. And did I move my cardboard again? I probably did. So for the mix, as I'm looking for something. I'm not an idiot. Ah. No, no, no. Oh, I must have moved it on myself. Oh, well. Yeah, this will be good enough. Okay, so for the mix, and I've actually started saving, when I get to uh, Mod Podge bottles that are like kind of half empty, what I'll do is I'll start setting up my mixes. Now, for my base coat, I am not going straight black because I'm keeping this a warmed, toned brickwork. Uh, which means I wanted to have a dark brown base. So I went in and I put in, it is equal parts burnt umber to pavement to Mod Podge. So it's three, it's, um, you have three elements, each equal parts. I just put it into my bottle, shake it up. I always shake it each and every time, even though, yes, it's been blended and everything like that. Just to be safe, give it a good shake. Shake, 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 Sonora. <sighs> Gotta love being able to use things around the house too. All right, so I'm just gonna take some of this and you can see it's got more of a grayish brown as opposed to the burnt umber tone. And I'm just gonna go in for a nice wide brush. Again, this is just from the cheap set. This is a good terrain painting brush. So all I'm gonna do now is go in and really make sure that I work it so that I'm shoving the paint into the spaces between the bricks. Yes, this is the same apron I had on uh, that the pictures of, there are pictures of on Twitter. I made a point to get myself a couple aprons because of the workshops I'm gonna be doing at different conventions and then going off to do panels. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that if I have something where there's a back-to-back -back issue, I can still look 
nice and pulled together and just pop an apron off as opposed to walking there all paint spattered. Oh my god, Merd Purge, as Puddin says, but for some reason, YouTube wanted to censor that one. Don't know why. YouTube is interesting. YouTube's been fun lately. So really, I'm just making a point of getting that paint into the nooks and crannies and then just doing a quick sweep up and down because you don't want it to have huge major puddles but you do want to make sure it's soaking in that is important and because of that Mod Podge mix in there it does strengthen a little bit actually a lot of it and it gives you a more solid piece and like I said I will go around and work the edges first and then I will work the top and you'll end up with a minimal amount of paint on your hands minimal but like I said this is where you can get the assembly line going and just do different parts each night as you pull it together really the biggest time factor is dry time uh, between the glue drying between the paint drying that's where you're gonna have waiting periods assembly is not too bad I will say that but I'm almost done getting these I like to do the longer sections too first and work it in I actually kind of like swirl the brush around a little bit too. And now we get the end pieces. Need a little bit more paint on my brush. Same thing, get it in on the end there. How are we doing on time? Hey, right at the half hour mark, just as I had hoped. No, I didn't lesson plan this at all. <laughs> and here we go on the other side. All right, so that takes care of all the sides. But um, but um, you can even hold it around a little bit more if you see there's other places that have just a little peeking out. Even if you do this and you see it's dry, because it happened on this piece. There are a couple of spots where is it here on this side. I'm just gonna go back in and I'll quickly like tuck in some more because I want this dark color in the recesses. That's gonna help with depth and color as we get going. And then I'm just gonna place this on top of this piece of cardboard and put that top layer on now when this is dry what i will do is flip all these pieces over and i do paint the bottom with the mod podge as well and i will be labeling these you know piece one piece two piece three so that they have a way of keeping track of all the little bits and pieces they are getting for inventory purposes each each item is getting numbered and signed by moi I'm craving chocolate now. I wonder why. What's funny is they do have a color called chocolate bar, but it's far too light and warm of a brown, which is why I combined the burnt umber with pavement. If you go straight up black, the black actually fights it more and takes over, and then it just gets really murky, and it's not quite the undertone I wanted. Okay, well, go have fun, Puddin, because that just sounds like a blast and a knot. Okay, so this guy is now going to go off to dry. I'm gonna tuck you over here. Eh, go live there. Go live there. And then, what did I do? Oh, I know what I do with my wipes. One second, I wanna get my wipes so I don't have brown all over my fingers. Oop, <laughs> kick the desk, kick the desk. So that gets it. So let me put my brush into the water to rinse. I have, like I said, I don't have a sink down in the basement so I've just started grabbing baby wipes for when I need to clean my hands a little bit. Totally giving you ideas for doing a 3D hero clicks table. All right, cool. Glad that is of some help for you. Yes, you definitely want, you Dungeon Matron, you want your glue stick to be dry before you move on to anything else. If you try and manipulate this before the glue is drying, you're gonna skew things, you're gonna make things go wonky, especially if you're putting the screws in first, that's a recipe for disaster. Everything you want to dry before moving on to the next thing. So I won't start the painting process until I know that Mod Podge is definitely dry, which is why this fellow, he already got his color ahead of time. Uh, so, are we good? I think we're, yeah, that's, that's much better. Huzzah, okay. So for the brick, it's actually gonna be like two separate rounds because the cap, I am making a different color than the classic red brick on here. And to do this brick work, these are the colors I'm pulling out. So we have golden sunset, bright red, and sun-kissed peach. 
So what I'm going to do first is start with my golden sunset. Because if you look at work, at work, at brick, a lot of it will have sort of these yellowish undertones to it. Um, and then you'll also get sort of like these peachy tones too. And then obviously it's a red brick, so I wanted to get the red in there. So what I'm going to do is actually sponge on golden sunset and sun-kissed. Ooh, so there's a sunny theme. I didn't even realize that. So golden sunset will get sponged on first, again, with a cosmetic wedge technique that I like to use. As then, as then. And then goes on the sun-kissed peach, and then I'm actually going to dry brush on the bright red. And that is going to need to dry, and then we'll address how the cap gets done. So that being said, let me get this started. Actually, let me move a couple things out of the way and as always I take these are just you can get like a whole pack of these for like a buck fifty hundreds I think this was a 200 pack so you basically just tear off a wedge and then take off little niblet pieces of the foam so you get sort of this instant texture and the reason why I like doing this is because I find it gives a finer porous look as opposed to if you use a kitchen spun sponge uh, that almost seems to be, it gets too, uh, it's almost too large of a texture. This gives you a finer texture for it, which I really like. And then I'll just, you know, pinch between pointer and thumb. Like I said, I'm going to start with Golden Sunset first. All right, big brother, thank you for stopping by. Always good to see you stop in. And then, uh, Kelly, are you leaving too? Or no, it was for pudding. It was for pudding having to leave for his meeting. The vomit inducing meeting. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see here. Oh, we had a great time on Don Bringers last night. If you were not able to catch it, please go over to Mini Terrain Domain and go to his video on demand section and check out the uh, hijinks we got into yesterday with questioning hostages and letting them go and then fighting some creepy beasts that Jake kind of cobbled together. All right, so what I found helps is keep the cap, hold it in your, hold it in your non-dominant hand and then keep the cap piece against the thumb line of your non-dominant hand. I am right-handed, so I'm right-hand dominant. Holding it my left hand, I'm making, left hand, not ham, I'm making sure that the cap is pressed up against my thumb. And then I'm just gonna run through and sponge this golden sunset onto where the bricks are. If it trails up a little bit onto the cap, that is okay. And don't get scared by this color yellow, okay? It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt anyone else. So same thing. Hold it so. And you keep that cap piece more towards your thumb. And then just work this on. Like a so. I'm going to do the same thing to your ends. Niblet pieces. I, I'm telling you, very technical, technical terms we're using here, folks. You have your niblet pieces. All right, so that gives you your golden sunset. Now keeping same sponge, I don't bother cleaning that. If you want super crisp changeovers of colors, you absolutely could change. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of tea. You could change out your sponges if you want to. I like the blending. So I'm gonna take my sun-kissed sun -kissed peach. So many suns. And again, just dip my sponge in. And you do want to just blot a little bit. And I always use paper plates. It's just my thing. So you're going to just blot it a little bit. Make sure you get a nice even coverage. And you'll see it starts to take form. And then same thing as before. Just lightly sponge this on. Like so. Getting the two colors to work with each other. The nice thing is, is that the sponging goes quickly and it goes a long way, which is why I like to do the sponging for these things. And that will give you the base that you're going to need for getting the red brick going. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm actually going to move on to my cap, which is a slightly different approach. Um, I will not be using the sponge, I will be dry brushing. So. Parted my god. I swear to God, as we get into colder weather, my body's like, and we hibernate. It's like, no, 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 darling body, not quite yet. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work into a layer of uh, Apple Barrel's Chestnut. This is a beautiful warm brown. I love, love, love to bits and pieces. This is going to be the first color that we dry brush onto our cap. Cap'em. And for this, I am going to move over to a more, we talked about this. This is actually a true home paintbrush. The bristles are a little bit more stiff than a craft paintbrush. Uh, so go into like your home improvement store or that type of thing and grab one of these. It's just the inch, is it inch wide or how much is this one? I think this is a three quarter, yeah, this is a three quarter inch wide flat brush. I like it. I, it gets put to a lot of use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chestnut. In that chestnut. You know what? I'm moving Mini V because I'm worried she's getting too close to the paints. Mini V, go stand over there. It's not a timeout. It's a go stand someplace safe. And I need paper towel. Hello, John. Oh, and this is the this is the apron that I shared on social media. It's got this really cool dragon on it, so I'm quite happy with it. Look at this dude. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Got it off Amazon. <laughs> so that's. That's my, that's my dragon apron. My roar. I have another one coming too that I can't wait. Yeah, chestnut's a great color. Uh, October in Canada, some of us do hibernate. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Okay, so I'm gonna dump it, dump, <laughs> no, dip into chestnut brown. And just like any dry brushing, get a good chunk of it off the brush and then just pull it across the upper portion. And in this case, I am not looking for full coverage. It's okay if that burnt umber mix does come through here and there. I am not concerned about that. And that gives me my upper layer taken care of. And then I will jump down to a smaller, where did you go? I just was using it yesterday. No. You'll do. I am gonna move down to a smaller flat head and do the same thing. And the reason why I'm going smaller is just because I found it easier to go along the edges here. And then just quickly pull across. And it is okay if you have slight blending on the edges here. It actually creates a shadow look, which isn't bad. So again, just take that chestnut and glide it across your edge pieces here, or the edge of the cap, I should say. And I will put on a slightly thicker layer just to really create that line of division between your paint colors. Yeah, I like the apron. And like I said, this is for like when I'm at my workshops. It's like, let's have something that's like, like, not like, 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 let's have something that's thematically appropriate for, you know, making terrain for Dungeons and Dragons. <gasps> Dragon aprons! <laughs> yeah! That's why I like my gnarled up wire brush. It does a really good job adding this old porous stone texture. And there's only a few hits on top that you have to do it with. It doesn't take that much work. So it shows up a lot better once you get paint on it. So again, I'm just gonna carefully dance this along the edge here. And this section doesn't take too, too long to dry, but I do wanna make sure that those colors are dry enough so that when I go back in, I won't have such an issue with um, the red bleeding. And then what I'll do is, because you can see the edges sort of get a little bit more, so I go back in with the wide brush and I will do another quick sweep of chestnut. So it's kind of like two layers just to get to that. There we go. So you can see the differences there. And now you want the chestnut to dry completely, totally. Absolutely. And let me rinse. Let me rinse my big brushes and this not so big brush. But yeah, that, that beat up old wire brush has become my favorite way of texturing things. Um, I do also use, I have a piece of coral that also does a really great job of adding texture and I love it. Looks like Cotswold stone. There you go. Yeah. All right, got my brushes cleaned off. Now what I'm going to do is, how's this feeling? Hold on. Let me get the paint off my hand so I actually get a better test run. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is, this is at a dry level I'm happy with. So I'm going to go back in with a brick, bright red 
for my brick, I am going to be doing a wash over this, which means that this is going to be brought down. The wash that I particularly have going for my, because it's a universal wash for everything, it does bring colors down about two and a half to three tones. So I know that I can go brighter with my colors because they that was the one thing that was stressed. They want color for these items. They don't want things to sort of fade into the background. So I'm perfectly comfortable using a bright red. If this bright red scares you, you can go in with either flamenco red or Tuscan red from uh, Apple Barrel. Those will also be good, more muted down substitutes for you. Um, Kelly, I usually do go in and eyeball it for myself. Uh, I will make note of it, what colors I'm using for something that's like a universal march it through. Like for this, I'm actually, gonna, I'll take a picture and I'll revert back to the picture be like, oh yeah, those are the colors I used and grab and go. Um, oftentimes I will go by my mood and grab the colors I want to use. Uh, so, and it's also good for people to see that you can do things in a variety because let's face it, not everything has been created and made up the same way. So everything has different hues of colors to it. So now with the brick bright red, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start adding in the red tone. It's not quite a true dry brush because I do want this to sort of take over a little bit more. But what happens is you have your darker golden yellow playing off the lighter peach. So you start to get the color variations in here. And again, the wash brings this down drastically. So don't, don't get scared. Or if you wanted to, you could leave this very bright. That's the other option. If you want to have this a bright and cheerful and uh, in your face, new build type of thing, by all means, go that direction with your brickwork. Again, I'm just going to work this in. I am definitely not concerned about getting this into the nooks and crannies. I don't want it to get into the nooks and crannies. I want that division, but you can start seeing that. Oh yeah. Always keep your paint recipes if you want to, especially if it's like a project where you need consistency, like hello, this. It helps. And again, get those edges. And now I am this time around, I am trying to be careful about not getting the red onto my cap piece. So you can see this is taking shape. And we're moving along quite nicely. That is the nice thing about, you know, when you make these videos, if for some reason I forget to take this photo at the end, <laughs> I just go back to the stream and like, what, wait, what, what did I use? Cause I will in my streams, I try and put down the paint colors that were put to use uh, to make it easier for people who want to recreate and look up the ingredients, if you will. Still working the bright red around. Again, don't let that scare you. Color is a good thing in terrain. It's something I'm trying to encourage. It's actually what my workshops at PAX are about. You don't have to get stuck in the gray. Oh, that's pretty cool, Dungeon Matron. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that little tidbit. I love getting little stories like that from people. My grandfather had a restaurant of his own and he um, it was an Italian American restaurant. He came over with a family pasta recipe and he, uh, he'd make the pasta fresh every morning. All right. So here we go. You can see the two different divisions here. What I'm going to do is keep working on the cap piece. I'm going to let that red dry just a little tiny bit. Ooh, ooh. No, I did not. Um, let that red dry just a little tiny bit before we go back to working on the cap. So let me rinse my brush. Color is life. Color makes things happier. Embrace the color. Go for the color. All right. Rinsed brush. So while this red is drying, the next two colors I'm going to work in for the cap is light mocha and antique white. So I'm building up these colors a little bit. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also work in the sunkissed peach if you kind of want to keep more of a, not a unity, but a similar tonal nod but I really did want to have these as two separate entities, essentially. So I'll go in with the light mocha now. 
Give that a nice little shake. I don't need a lot. Unless you get the paint on your cheek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got careful about that. There have been times I've walked around and then I realized like, oh, why did no one tell me? I had like this streak of something on my cheek. They probably thought I was just doing something funny makeup wise. You never know. Um, so I'm just making sure that my brush is not super duper wet. Yeah, we're looking good. Pain? Well, you don't want pain on your cheek either. All right, now I'm going to dip into the my paper towel back. Dip into the light mocha, and in this case, yes, I am going to dry brush this. Just check and make sure. This is where the three inch pieces are so much easier. <laughs> my hand span only, my th I think that's actually why I capped it at six inches because it was getting to be too much of a pain of making them longer and trying to hold them more easily. So now I'm gonna go through and look at that, laugh at the texture. I'm gonna give light mocha a sweep along the top. Like so. Ooh, I forgot to turn off notifications on my phone. That's what that was about. Like having spinach in your teeth. As one who can't eat spinach, that's actually not a worry for me now. And then I'm just gonna turn it on its edge and sweep it along the edge too. And now we're getting that division of the cap and of the brickwork like I so wanted. And just very carefully. You can, if you need to, if you're more comfortable, you can jump down to a narrower brush. That is okay. But since this is more of a dry brush, I'm just sort of freehanding it, just being as careful as I can. If you find you get too much on. Yes, I know, someone is trying to chat with me. You can wait your turn, phone. Did I get that one yet? No, I did not get that side yet. And then I just get this edge here. Okay, so that gives me the first round of color for the cap piece, which I want. <laughs> Part of your recipe for, recipe for painting aged wood. Yeah, everyone has their own techniques, which is fun. With woods, I always go in a different direction each time. I mean, they're the basic starting layers, yes. But it always goes into, do I want a warm wood? Do I want a not warm wood? Do I want a warm wood? Do I want a cool tone wood? Do I want a light wood? Do I want a dark wood? So I'll play around with that. In fact, I have, I'll show you the four carts because we're getting close to this being at a point where it needs to dry and I'll explain the wash. Um, but I made these four carts for the build as well. Actually, I can unplug my hot glue gun before I forget. Uh, now I'm gonna jump into antique white. That's gonna be my last round of dry brushing on the cap of these. And what was I saying? Oh, I'll show you the carts, but each of them is gonna have a different paint wood effect on them because I want them each to be unique looking. I don't want them to look like cookie cutter carts because if you were to go into, um, you know, say you were to go into a city, they wouldn't all look exactly like each other unless they were taxis. And these are not taxis. These are carts from different people and everything like that. So that's why I am making sure my carts all look different. Um, have you ever played with infinity mirrors as part of a terrain? Uh, people have done it, Scavenger Queen, and there are people who have done it. They've done it very well. So in my book, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'd recommend uh, Realmsmith had one. Did Wylock do one? I want to say Wylock did one as well. So those would be the two I'd check out for infinity mirrors. I'm trying to remember if Wylock did. For some reason, I want to say he did. Um, do I recommend using brushes over sponges for flat brushing? I recommend using brushes over sponges for this type of thing where I need the detail work to be more precise. Um, I'm going in with my antique white now. If it's something where the piece is all one universal color, then I'd go with the sponge, quite honestly, because it'll be faster that way. But because I have these two different color zones. Now I am with the antique white favoring the edge a little bit here because I definitely want that to get that nice break in the color. Um, so it, it depends on the project. I, I make use of everything I have. Some bits are more useful than others depending on what it is you want to do. 
So again, just going through and you can see all that great, come back here, all the great texture poking back through. And again, I just want, oh, I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well holding my brushes today. It's because I'm trying to hold it so lightly that I don't press down. It's kind of getting away from me. So yeah, we have that. Again, just sort of dance it along that edge there. Make sure you get all of them. The lighting is a trick. Um, check out Realm Smiths. I think that one should help you out. They are also on YouTube. More of a focus on miniature painting and streams, but they do have a few builds. So check that channel out for sure. Okay, and that gives me my top cap piece. And I'm not worrying about what's going on here. And I'll explain why. What I'm gonna do is I will do the wash. First the paint needs to dry a little bit more. The wash will go on top and then what's gonna happen here with the brick is I'm actually gonna go back in with my sun-kissed peach once my wash is fully dry and just do a quick dry brush with the peach to help bring out the edges. So all of this will kind of blend into itself. And the antique white is light enough that when you do put the wash on, you still get your break in colors. So I don't really need to dry brush the top cap so much as I will go back through and brush the brick. So what I have done, let me put it this way so you can actually see. So that gives you your base color and this is what needs to dry. As you can tell, there's still a little couple spots that are drying with the red. Um, so what I have done for, where'd it go? Here it is. Um, yeah, Cafe Noir. So what I have done to start making my own washes for terrain. Uh, do I have any recommendations for different color bricks? And Yes, take the colors that you want to incorporate for your brickwork and sponge. Uh, and just make sure you have your colors dabbled around and keep it to sponging. Uh, don't do the dry brush over red like I did. Just keep sponging around until you get your variation of colors. You can even go in and like hand notch out certain bricks to be more of one color than another. You'll find that as another effective means of doing that, Mike. Uh, that's one thing you do. So to make my terrain wash, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, these glazes from Folk Art have, I've actually found have been really great for that. So I use the Cafe Noir as my base color. And then because I want this warmer, I also add in the Cocoa Bean Antique Medium. So I will blend these two together. This I will say play around with getting the color you want and then start adding in uh, I do a little, little bit of Dawn detergent uh, just to sort of help keep the pigment sort of floating around there nicely. They do have, I haven't used it yet though, they do have a floating medium. I haven't played with this yet. I think I'm going to after I'm done with this particular um, mix that I have going and put in it's literally like just a smidge of Dawn dish detergent and then put this in together and then I'll add, it's usually like Mix these together, get the color you want, and then I'll put in the uh, distilled water until I get the consistency that I want. And that is how I've created my terrain wash for this project. So you can see I just have like an old <laughs> vitamin supplement bottle, and this is my terrain wash in here. And it actually does a really nice job of coating things nicely. I did use it on my well. Get the well. Kind of my well. So I use this for my well. And it does a really good job of just getting into the cracks and doing all that bit of loveliness. So that is the well that I had started a couple live streams ago. All done. Set and ready to go. I just need to get it wrapped up so it's nice and protected. Put you back up there. So this needs to dry a little bit more and then I will put that wash on. And then like I said, once the wash is dry, the last thing I will do is I'm going to go back in with, that's light mocha, <laughs> sun-kissed peach and literally just do a dry brush across here to bring out, because if you look at brickwork, it has lighter por portions on it, uh, you know, where lichen and stuff is growing or what have you, but that will then give me the more brick-like look that I want. And that is how I'm gonna be creating these brick lengths for the city scatter for the cobalt press terrain. Once I get all of these painted up, I will do like some fun glamour shots and you can see it on the cobblestone mats with other things. And I will show you, um, we will be able to do it. So next week I'm gonna show you the cap corner, cap pieces that are going to be basically lamps, um, lantern type of things to give this a really cool lighting effect. 
So join me next week for that part of this terrain build. During the week, I'm going to make sure I finish up all of my lovely brick strips that I need to do. Uh, but yeah, this is this is my method of creating these city wall scapes so that you can just scatter it around. Add some color to your table as well. And like Mike asked, if you want to do different colored bricks, then just go and sponge it through. Do not do the dry brushing of the over red. Uh, you can go in and just do little individual like tick, 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 kind of paint individual bricks here and there to help vary the color. Um, let me see here. Did I get everyone in the chat? Yeah, I think we talked about that. All right, so let me show you the carts because the carts were definitely a lot of fun oh, this guy can move you back so I literally just sat there and a lot of the questions were how did you get these wheels done the wheels came from those gear sets that I had going on um, just to have on hand so that means if you go to my website www.thecraftingmuse.com I have ready and prepared for those of you interested in these Zobeck city builds I have put the supplies Guy Guck says, hi, I have put the supplies that I have purchased off of Amazon as well as the books that I'm using as inspiration from Cobalt Press. They are all there in the tab that says Zobeck City Build. Uh, so you can click on that and you'll see pictures of the items that I'm talking about. You click on those pictures, it takes you to my Amazon affiliate store where at no extra charge to you, you're actually helping me get some extra funds for the channel because I get a nice little commission kickback from that. Again, it doesn't affect your pricing. It just gives me sort of a, hey, you got people over here shopping. Yay, thank you very much. All right, let's shift you guys out of the way here. And then where'd Mini V go? Here's Mini V. Bring her back out. So basically I took, there were some great, I'm, I'm gonna paint these. These are still kind of in the getting pulled together mode. Um, but basically I took foam core, I took uh, coffee stir sticks, I took just some narrow wooden dowels for the arm. And I am going to get like horses and stuff, which is why I'm waiting on the cross piece here uh, to figure out how I want to do that. I think I might just do like some, um, I think I actually might just do some uh, foam fabric type of stuff. So I think I got, there we go. Um, so each cart is unique to itself. But the thing I want to make sure of is for the larger carts, especially you can put a mini or two at the top, which is why I didn't make it totally hyper realistic. I did want to make sure that you could have it so it was usable. So you could put a mini in the front and then cargo in the back or have a few minis in the back of your carts as it gets pulled along, so on and so forth. You can tip your cart over. You can have stuff piling out the back. Um, so that's the one cart where it's more of the open back. And you just have these wheels and these look like perfect wagon wheels. I need to go back in and just take a good paint to cover the metallic gears but these again these are just these gears from that collection again link is in the uh amazon affiliate link so that's one of them and this is the other i did two large two smaller carts so this is the other larger one which is a more enclosed cart schlepping people most likely and then we have this little guy i kind of saw this as sort of like a farmer coming into town with their fruits and veggies type of thing um, so you can again just kind of pop one mini on the top there if you want to or what have you. But again, it's got its little charm little tip down on its side. And I had nice little wheels to work there. And then this one, this is the one I finished up yesterday and I was like, I got a little bit too into making this one. Because <laughs> like the other one, it does tip down. I'm like, no, 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 come on. I want to make it so it can stand up. So yes, I actually did put <laughs> its own little created little wooden chuck so that you can place this down and prop it underneath and it'll stand up provided I get the right one side is better than the other one there we go so you can actually have it stand up and not tip over <laughs> and when you're not using it you can chuck it into the back of the cart that's that's where my mind with these details so those are the carts that I've created um, again I need to paint them they're all gonna get that different paint job though they're not all gonna be painted the same way so that each of them has its own little unique look and I will work on those next week as well and I'll update with photos of those but this again was all it was uh, foam core it was cardstock the gears that look like wheels and really with it being Zobeck it's not surprising if there were metal wheels I will say that and yeah we'll take it from there so the stuff is coming together little by little I am focusing a great deal on getting the smaller bits pulled together and then I'll work on the bigger pieces. Uh, Cause again, this all needs to be ready by, we're hoping December. Fingers crossed it should be good to go. 
It really should be because I'm working on this stuff every single day. So those are the carts. And again, we got the bricks going, which is wunderbar. I'll probably be sitting tonight and like painting these all up so I can get them going. But I love, I love, love, love putting in all this little extra detail for this cobalt press because you know, I want to give them something where it's uh, things that'll draw people to the table because they get interested in seeing something different on the table. And uh, yeah, that's why it's a, it's a fun thing that I want to share with everyone so you can see what the process is and what it is I'm creating. If you ever see me sharing something for this build online and I haven't done it on one of these streams, do let me know and I'll see if I can recreate it for you. But that is pretty much it for today in terms of the brick walls. Like I said, I need this to dry more. I'll then put on my little mix of uh, wash which is really kind of like a really darkish brown. And then once that dries, I go back in and the only thing that's gonna get another round is the brick itself with the Sunkish Peach. Not even quite yet, because there's still a couple little wet spots I can see. Um, I really want this to dry because I don't want colors bleeding into each other. So I'll probably, I'll probably do the wash later tonight, quite frankly, and then just kind of give these the weekend to dry up. Um, so that is it for me. Remember to join me next Wednesday. We'll find out which of the dark crystal miniatures my patrons have voted upon. Right now, the Chamberlain is in the lead. So if you're one of my patrons, get over to Patreon, check out the post on the October mini of the month and use that link to vote. Uh, if you're interested in being able to participate once a month on which mini gets painted once a month, you too can become a patron for as low as $1 a month and get to participate in that. Uh, but that is it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful restful weekend. I will see you later. I'll interact with you. Say hi to me on Twitter. Say hi to me at Facebook, uh, Instagram, even, you know, comment below in the uh, comment section and that is going to be it and then yes end of next week i'm going to show you the lighted posts that are going to be acting as end caps to all this which should be a really fun sharp look for you as well so take care everyone be good to each other be good to yourselves and i will talk to you all later <laughs> bye